episode of Women in STEM Wednesdays. Today's featured female scientist is actually pretty relevant to what a lot of us are seeing right now with the COVID-19 epidemic. She made amazing strides in the field of microbiology. Today's female scientist, Dr. Esther Ledenberg, is known as the mother of modern genetics for her work studying microorganisms like bacteria and viruses. For today's video, I'm going to start by going over some information about microorganisms. I'm then, of course, going to read the story of Esther Ledenberg from our Women in Science book. And then I'm going to finish by showing you all a fun experiment you can do at home to see what kind of bacteria are on your hands, phones, and computers. Microbiology is the study of microorganisms. And microorganisms are species of organisms that we can't see with the naked eye. Some common microorganisms that I'm sure you might be familiar with are bacteria, molds, yeast, viruses, fungi. Did you know that there are over 40,000 species of bacteria on Earth? And even that is a low number compared to what scientists predict are actually on our planet. Scientists predict anywhere from 10 million up to a billion bacteria are here on Earth, and that's a lot of different species and diversity to study. When you first think about microorganisms like bacteria, you might consider getting sick or thinking about getting a disease. But not all bacteria are bad. A branch of microorganisms called probiotics include helpful bacteria and yeast that are actually really great for our bodies. You might be able to consume these by eating or drinking things like yogurt or kombucha. So many of us have probably heard the word mutant or heard about things mutating, going through mutations, but we might not all be familiar with what that means. A mutation occurs when a DNA sequence change happens. This could be either a single base or a nucleotide, or it could be a whole gene deletion, part of a gene deletion, a lot of different types of things. However, they're not always these bad, crazy changes that we sometimes see in pop culture like in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or other movies like that. This is a phenomenon that Esther Ledenberg observed in bacteria, actually. She was the first person to show that bacterial DNA actually mutates spontaneously. Unfortunately, being a woman of science in the 1950s and 60s made her a victim of gender discrimination. So I'm so excited today to be able to acknowledge her for her work, give her credit for the amazing strides she's made in the fields of bacterial and viral genetics. Without further ado, let's dive into Esther's story and learn a little bit more about her amazing contribution to science. Esther Lutterberg always knew how to charm a room. Her smarts and humors made her an excellent storyteller and allowed her to get her ideas heard when they might have otherwise been ignored. She was born in 1922 in the Bronx into a very poor family. She went on to study genetics at Stanford University, where she got her master's degree in 1946. That same year, she married Joshua Letterberg, a molecular biologist. Esther earned her doctorate from the University of Wisconsin, where she and Joshua would work together to study bacteria. While peering into her microscope, Esther noticed that some of the E. coli bacteria cells had a nibbled appearance. Esther discovered a new type of bacteriophage, which is a virus that infects a bacterium, called a lambdophage. This virus acted differently. It did not immediately kill its host bacteria. Lambdophage would hide out inside the bacteria's DNA until its host was about ready to die. Then it would spread. Studying lambdophage has given us a better understanding of RNA, DNA, and diseases like herpes and tumor viruses. Esther also created a new way of studying mutations in bacteria called replica platine. Before this, studying mutations took a very long time. She used a piece of velvet to stamp bacteria into new petri dishes containing different types of chemicals. It was easy to see which had mutated and which had died. This new method allowed her research team to study bacterial resistance to antibiotics and prove that bacteria can mutate spontaneously. They also found some bacteria were resistant to antibiotics even before having contact with them. Their work led to Joshua's winning of the Nobel Prize in 1958. However, in his award speeches, he never thanked Esther for her research. They returned to Stanford together in 1959, but divorced in 1966. 
She continued her work at the university and became the director of the plasma of the Plasmid Reference Center. She loved her work so much that she continued her research even after she officially retired. This is what you'll need for today's activity. Ziploc bags, a Sharpie to write with, any kind of thread, and of course, your hands. What we're going to be starting today is an experiment that's going to see just how many microorganisms are on our hands when they're washed, when they are not washed, when we use things like sanitizer, and when we touch our phones or our computers. First, we're gonna start off by labeling our Ziploc bags with different conditions in which our hands would have experienced. The first thing that I'm going to do, and is something that you should really consider doing in any experiment, is making a control. So I'm going to label this bag here, control, and I'm gonna put in parentheses, nothing touched bread. And for our experiment today, our bread is kind of going to represent a Petri dish. It's going to be the media that the germs on our hands will grow on in the next week or so. Other conditions that I'm going to use are going to be my hands when they are not clean. I'm going to write that on my bag. Hands washed with soap. Hands that used hand sanitizer. and hands that have touched my laptop keyboard. Of course, if you want to test any other biological dish conditions like touching your kitchen counter or maybe touching your doorknob, feel free to add those to your experiment. Now that we have our bags labeled, let's get to adding our treatment or our different hand conditions to our bread. Of course, like I said, we always want our control. So I'm picking out a piece of bread that is in between two other slices so that it's the least likely to have come in contact with different microorganisms. And I'm putting that in my control bag. If you want to be extra careful, you can always wear gloves and touch your bread to make sure that nothing on your hands touches it. Now I have my piece of bread that I'm going to smother my dirty hands all over in hopes that maybe it'll help culture up some microorganisms. And I'm going to put it in my not clean sandwich bag. Now I'm gonna treat my hands with some hand sanitizer. And I'm going to touch my bread with these freshly sanitized hands. And of course, put this in my hand sanitizer bag. Now I'm going to go into my bathroom and I'm going to wash my hands with warm water and plenty of soap for 20 seconds. So now I just got done washing my hands and I'm going to touch my bread with my clean hands and put it in the wash hands bag. The condition that I'm most interested in seeing results for is touching the keys of my computer. I've actually been pretty good about periodically sanitizing my computer and my phone during this COVID-19 period, but we'll see just how good of a job I've been doing at keeping this clean. So my hands have rubbed all over this keyboard that goes with me everywhere. And now I'm going to touch my bread with my keyboard hands and put it into its bag. Of course, we're not going to automatically see microorganism growth on these pieces of bread. Stay tuned next week to see just how much microorganism growth I have on my different conditions with bread. And if you're tuning in and following along at home, I'm interested to hear what you all have by the time next week rolls around.